there an Illuminati? If you mean, are there people who secretly exert great forces on world events that we don't know about, then yes. Yes, there is an Illuminati. And this is one of them. His name is John McCone the Central Intelligence Agency and president of the ITT Corporation, once one of the 10 largest corporations on Earth. But Cohen was accused of being a war profiteer after the Second World War, but was still appointed chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission, a position he used to maneuver himself into becoming head of the CIA under President John F. Kennedy. In 1964, Brazil's democratically elected left-wing government, which had been taking over and seizing American businesses, was overthrown in a violent coup d'etat. At the time, the CIA denied oh. any involvement. Today, the CIA admits it helped the Brazilian military overthrow the democratically elected government. And guess who was CIA director at the time? our friend, John McComb. In September of 1973, Chile's democratically elected President Salvador Allende was overthrown, once again with the help of the CIA. In Cuba, Fidel Castro. In Cuba, Fidel Castro. Tuvo que luchar con las armas en la mano had to fight arms in hand no había because there, no, there was no other way to do it. In Chile, hemos usado el camino legal. And in Chile we have uh, followed the legal channels. This is a photo of Allende just moments before he committed suicide. Allende had been nationalizing American businesses also the largest of which was IGT, a company that John McCone had become the CEO of after leaving the CIA. Senate hearings later showed that McCone was on the phone with the current head of the CIA and the leader of the Chilean right-wing coup, Augusto Pinochet, on the overthrow was occurring. The, the United States had the policy of trying, and uh, the testimonies here said it was to, uh, to continue democracy in Chile. This is Michael Town, soldier of the American corporate Illuminati. He was born in Iowa, but when his father got a job working for Ford in Chile, he moved there and he ended up marrying a Chilean woman who was connected to the right wing of uh, the Chile, Chilean society. And after Allende's overthrow and Augusto Pinochet took power, Michael Townley and his wife became agents of the Chilean secret police and in effect agents of the Central Intelligence Agency for the United States. In 1976, Orlando Letelier, who was the inspiration for a character in Oliver Stone's movie Scarface, was purchaser of our national product, which is of course cocaine, cocaine. On one hand, you're saying the United States government is spending millions of dollars to eliminate the flow of drugs onto our streets. At the same time, we are doing business with the very same government. He was blown up. He was killed right in Washington, D.C. by a car bomb. And Michael Townley and his Cuban friends that he met through the CIA were responsible. Recently, the death of Chilean poet and Nobel Prize winner for literature, Pablo Neruda, has come under scrutiny as possible murder by poisoning. Michael Townley is the chief suspect once again. Townley's adopted home country of Chile and their brutal dictator Augusto Pinochet were perhaps the most important state sponsors of anti-left terrorism in the Western Hemisphere, other than the United States itself, of course. The FBI eventually convicted Michael Townley of the bombing and murder of Orlando Letelier, but he was released just six years after and put into the witness protection program. In 1997, Townley resurfaced to make incriminating statements against his former wife for her part in car bombings in Argentina. She was eventually sentenced to a long prison term in Chile, but the Chilean court reduced her sentence to home confinement. In October of 2017, a team of experts 
determined that it was most likely that Nobel Prize winner Pablo Neruda had died from a laboratory cultivated bacteria, aka poison. You may think, how come I never heard of this crazy story? Could it all be really true? Well, in Chile, the case of Michael Townley and his wife and their murderous work across the Americas on behalf of the Chilean secret police and the CIA are well documented. And now, even the ultimate pop culture bona fide has been bestowed upon the couple, a TV miniseries on South American television. Ask yourself this, if the US government is willing to work with people that will blow up foreign diplomats in our own capital city, and assassinate Nobel Prize winners in literature? What do they care about the average citizen like you? Even in America itself. All of the matters to which you refer have been developed by well-established procedures in the government that have been consistently tightened approved by the president and briefed to the appropriate committees. This doesn't make them right. I'm no, just trying to... makes it all the more appalling. During a single nightmarish day in November 1943, all of the more than 6,000 prisoners of the Nazi camp that Yaqui Pali had guarded were systematically butchered. Now to the deportation overnight of a New York man. Officials are calling the last surviving Nazi collaborator. Authorities say the 94-year-old came here in 1949, hiding his past as an armed guard in a brutal Nazi prison camp. He was stripped of his citizenship years ago, but he remained here in the U.S. It is until now, and ABC's Tara Palmieri is here with the story. Tara, good morning. Good morning, Paula. Yaquif Pauli has been living in the shadows for decades. A man authorities say is the last known surviving Nazi collaborator on U.S. soil until now living in Queens, New York. His presence there bringing on years of outrage from the surrounding community. But this morning, he's been deported to Germany at the direct order of President Trump. ABC News was there exclusively as ICE agents wheeled Yaquif Pauli from his New York home. Sir, are you a Nazi? You're watching a now frail 95-year-old man oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. finally being deported for his alleged role as an armed guard at a Nazi death camp in Poland decades after his alleged involvement. Any regrets, sir? you have any regrets? Justice Department investigators say Pauli was complicit in the deaths of thousands of Jews during World War II. Authorities say Pauli lied to immigration officials when he first entered the U.S. in 1949. And it wasn't until 2003 that he was exposed as an alleged war criminal and stripped of his U.S. citizenship. 